Hello everyone, welcome back to another session of uh, Pella Venture where you're experiencing entrepreneurship through this program and hopefully in the last two three sessions you've been able to progress in your pursuit to create your own company, build products, ideate, fine tune it, talking to customers and taking it to the next level. Welcome back again. Uh, before we get further in today's session, as always, let's do a recap. What we did in the last session was around product uniqueness, how to find something that's unique in the product that you're building, what we call differentiator, how to do also do some planning and track your budget. Let's look at what we did last session. On pro product uniqueness, it's the most unique aspect about your product. Why would someone buy it? It's unique because it's lower cost or better quality or meeting a need that is left unfulfilled today where there is no product or any other aspect of your product that's unique. You want to sit and discuss for every product that you're going to build what is unique and write the two or three unique aspects of it, which I told you will be used later on when we start to sell the product and you will see that today. So that's about product uni uniqueness and I hope you've spent some time for the list of product within your team, called out two or three unique points, discussed it as a team. So it's, it's important that you do that and I hope you've done that. So that's a recap on the product uniqueness. We also talked about as you start building products, you'll have to buy raw materials and then you'll have to build using the raw materials and sell it. But before you do all of that, you want to start planning and planning, which is project plan, is all about who does what activity when. And uh, we discussed about being very specific, unambiguous, putting a name or one or more names for every item, that every task that you have to do. Uh, buying the raw materials might be one of the first one that you would do as you start your product building process and then comes the building activities and then the selling activities. So the whole idea is to sit down as a team in your company and put the project plan together. We looked at what is a good project plan, what is not, how to get as specific as possible. For example, if you're buying something, you say, buy this, how many, what size, by what date. Similarly for build and similarly you know, once you start uh, selling, what are the things you want to do? We also talked about color coding. When there's some, some item is completed, you color them green. If it's still in progress, you mark them in yellow. If it's closer to deadline and you have a high risk or a possibility of not meeting the deadline, you mark it in red, sit down as a team, and then start to discuss how to plan. I also gave you an online tool for Gantt charts where you have dependencies between these different project planning items where one thing only when it is done and another activity can start. So if that one slips, this will also slip by the same number of days and things like that. So project planning is an important aspect and I hope by now you have put together a project plan that can be used for uh, buying raw materials if you need to, planning all the activities needed to build the product and then start to think about selling. Okay, and project plan can always be kept active. You can change it, uh, but it's important for you to have the plan so that you meet the timelines. We also talk after the project plan about what are expenses and what is the cost. So expenses are the money that you spend as a company when you buy things, when you're buying things for building your product. So expenses are money spent. And where do you have the money? The money comes from your capital, which is the you know initial money that is given to the company to run the company. You take money from there to start building the products. And every expense we meant, we talked about to make sure that you track the expense, which date, who spent it, for what, was it for purchasing, if so, how many did they buy, what was the unit cost, and what's the total cost. Here is an example of that particular uh, table, how to track expenses. That's an important aspect of um, tracking your expenses because you need to know how much you're spending. 
we also talked a little bit about planning how to buy raw materials don't buy too many if you buy too many then you may not use them all and there is wastage um, if you try to build too many products with what you have built as raw materials and you don't sell then you'll have a price pressure or you may be at a loss you don't want to also buy too little because if you want to build let's say 10 of something and you bought the, bought the raw materials that you can buy build only five then you're also under building your product which you cannot sell so you want to be careful we also talked about how to build buy in small stages meaning if you needed let's say you know 10 tubes of oil paint you instead of buying all 10 at the same time you may want to buy five and depending on how you've used and not used think whether you want to buy five more or maybe buy two or three only just as an example so those are some things that we discussed and then we also talked about capital capital is the money that you receive um, to uh, money you receive by the company to run the company when i say run the company this is the money that you will use for buying raw materials maybe paying for your transportation maybe for making brochures and flyers for selling your product things like that so this is the capital money that you have we also talked about how to track capital who gave you the capital when it was received so this is money you received not by selling but by way of funding for your company and then who gave it what amount you got and then keeping the total capital as you can see the total capital received is a summation of all the capital that you got and the total available capital is the total capital minus what you have spent already you may have spent buying raw materials so in this case let's say you spent 325 rupees out of 1000 that was your capital received then the remaining capital is 675 rupees 675 so this is a quick recap of what we did last week i hope this brings back to memory very important topics around planning expense tracking capital tracking so now that you've started to build the product you know how many you want to build and you've already you know in the process of building a completed building today and this session we'll talk about three new aspects advertising how do you advertise how do you make people aware of your product that's one how do you price your product now that you've built your product you've spent money to buy things and you've built it now you need to put a price tag for it that's the selling price so you want to know how to calculate or how to come up with the right price for the product for which you need to know what is the cost expense you spent to build it and then what do you want the selling price to be and then how will you sell it you know what's your selling strategy you know how are you going to keep track of your sales and sales order and your revenue we'll talk about all three three topics today okay without further let's move on so advertising comes under what we call product marketing so you have the product and you need to market the product the way product marketing should be done is you cover a few topics so that number one you should always be fully aware of the list of products you're building as a company some companies may build only one product and they will build many of them some companies and depending on what company you formed and what you have ideated as a team you may build more than one product so regardless you remember very early on in our uh, entrepreneurship exercise you created a table of what products am i going to build based on my interest my skill and is there a need for it right you arrived at a product or a list of products so and you also said how many i want to build then you talk to the customers at a high level and you try to tune the product change it a little bit based on the feedback you got or the number of units you wanted to build nevertheless you have a product list so you should always know what you're building have that list in front of you as you start to think about marketing because that's the one that you're going to market what are the different features of the product it could be the color the size the price the quality how it looks whether you've personalized it various aspects of that product which are also the uniqueness of the product that we did in the last uh, uh, you know session write down all of them because that's going to be useful for you to market it now what's unique about it we talked about it. and what are the benefits of the product to the person buying it 
um, they can use it in specific areas are they saving money are they going to save time what value do they get from buying that product you want to write the product benefits and then lastly the pricing um, how attractive is the pricing and, and are they going to get the value for the money that they pay for the product that they're getting these are some of the things that you want to keep in mind as you start building what is called as product marketing because that's what you will use in the advertising so let's go look at what advertising is there are two ways for you to share and talk about the product that you're building only if people get to know what you're building will they want to buy it you can't build it and suddenly stand one day and say come and buy it you'll have to build some kind of an interest some kind of an uh, want from your target customer to expect the product when it's ready so when it's ready they will go buy it there are two simple ways of doing this one is word of mouth and the other is lately the social media so when it comes to word of mouth you spread the word by talking about your product through phone calls emails making posters and flyers you talk about it in your school maybe with your friends and families in your uh, community where you live or the neighborhood that you are in and the other way of doing this is in addition to the word of mouth is a social media where you can post about your product in your personal facebook instagram and whatsapp accounts now there is some things uh, that i want to caution everyone about as you start to market and advertise your product you don't want to spam or cold call people or send broadcast messages about your product uh, there are there are there are couple of things reasons why you don't want to do it one that's a bad practice two when you do that sometimes you could get some negative press from the audience people will say why is this person doing it i'm never going to buy it so you don't want to do spamming cold calling or broadcast broadcast messages it can cause frustration and negativity what you can do is um, you know you use caution when you are sending it through email or posting in social media but you can post it in your own account in your own social media handle uh, be it twitter you know instagram or facebook and that may be okay but not do more of a broadcast but those are very important and critical tools word of mouth and social media for you to get the word out about your product build some excitement build some interest from people so that you can start to look at potential customers who will buy it so these are the two key aspects of um, you know advertising or marketing your product so you may you should sit as a team and figure out and also add, put it in your project plan who is going to do this maybe you want to build a flyer maybe you want to put it in specific facebook uh, personalized account or handles and if so what will you write about it what are you going to tell which about the product so that there is interest so you may want to spend some time and trying to figure out how to advertise the product using some of these means okay now comes the most important aspect which is pricing what is going to be the price tag for your product and how do you determine how much should the price be first and foremost thing in this is you should know the cost what did it take for you to build the product how much money did you as a company spend to build the product now how much you spent could be because you bought some material raw materials to build the product it could be labor cost you may have spent some time or you may have asked somebody to build it for whom you gave some labor cost you want to track track that also in the expenses see we've always seen in the example only in the expense table we only say i bought this i bought this i bought this but you never say i paid this to somebody because they did some work for me that was needed for the product you want to track that also in expense and then there is also transportation cost sometimes you may have to drive and go somewhere to buy something and come back uh, because of which there may be petrol or gasoline cost or you may have taken a public transportation or you may have taken an auto rickshaw or whatever right a tempo traveler to buy raw materials and come so they could be transportation so that also you want to add in the expense tracker and then if you're spending some money like we talked about for marketing and sales like posters and brochures and others you want to track that so all of this goes into your expense table 
and you want to key, know exactly how much it costed to build the product you're building, which is important in the formula for you to fix a price tag for the product you're going to sell. The second important aspect is roughly know based on the product you're building who your customers are, what is their demographics, what is their affordability, what is their spending pattern. Um, sometimes you may say, hey, I will not pay more than this amount for buying something like this. So you want to have that idea in mind, which is basically know your customers. How much do you think they will typically pay? You know, at the end of the day, you should remember we are also customers. We ourselves on a day-to-day -day basis are car customers, so we have some idea. Sometimes you could also test this by asking a few people, hey, I'm building this product. I'm thinking of pricing it at this amount. Do you think you will be, you know, people will be interested and they'll say, yeah, it's too low a price or no, it's too high. You may have to reduce. You don't have to immediately change, but gather that intelligence to know your customer's affordability. Then the third important aspect is choose a profit percentage for you to arrive at a selling price. So you know how much it costed to build the product. You know what the affordability of, this is a specific number. This is the data you have, how much you spent money to build the product. You know what it is. You know roughly, this is not specific, it's a rough idea of customers, how much they may or they may not pay for your product. And then you wanna fix or choose a profit percentage for you to calculate the selling price. And I'll show that to you in just a minute. So let's look at this, arriving at a selling price. The top table here shows all your expenses, how much money you spent to build a product. Um, so in this particular example, you know, you bought a bunch of things, raw materials in, in various quantities. You also spent some money to go transportation for petrol for you to go to the store and come back. You've put that also in your expense tracker. This is your expense tracker table. And then using all of this, you built a product which is nature painting. How many did you build? You built 10 of them. And to build 10 of them totally, you've spent 2000 rupees. Your raw materials and transportation together is 2000 rupees. Using that 2000 rupees worth of money that you spent, you came out, you built 10 nature paintings. This is your 10 products. Now the profit percentage that you are choosing, this is an example, is 20%. You may choose 15%, you may choose 25 or 30%. Again, this percentage is a number that you will change to arrive at a selling price and then look at the selling price and see will the customer be able to afford it or not. If it's too high, then you will reduce your profit percentage lower and recalculate. So let's take, for example, a profit percentage of 20%. You built 10 products. You spent 2000 rupees to build the 10 products. So the cost to build or create 10 nature paintings was 2000 rupees. The cost to build one is 2000 divided by 10, that's 200 rupees. If I were to calculate a profit percentage of 20%, you take the cost of building one and then you add, the uh, add to it the cost of building one times the profit percentage. So it comes to 240 rupees if you used a 20% profit. 200 rupees is what it took for me to build one based on how much I spent totally. If I want a 20% profit on this, I should fix the price of one nature painting at 240 rupees. So you understood, right? Two important things that went to calculating 240 rupees as the price tag. Number one, the total amount of expenses, money you spent to build a product. How many did you build? right and what's the profit percentage you would like to choose now how much you spent how many you built are fixed numbers you know it the profit percentage you start to put a number calculate and come now if you let's say 240 seems too high and the affordability of your customer will not let them buy 240 then you will reduce this 20 percent to maybe 15 percent or 10 percent and recalculate the price or if you think this is too low, you may make this 
but be careful don't go too high okay this is important and you want to be transparent also sometimes a customer will ask hey this price is so high how much are you making out of this what's the profit you should be able to answer that question okay um so that's how you arrive at a selling price i hope you understood this this is an important aspect and you want to do this for every product you're building like i said some companies will build one product some companies may build more than one product then you'll have to figure out how to price it accordingly now once you've arrived at the pricing and you know what the unique features of your product are you can start to sell now how do you sell you can sell it through online meaning people can send you an email and saying hey i need this or through facebook or instagram or whatsapp me say i want your product that you're building um please you know tell me how to pay how to get it you could have a storefront you could be having your own shop or you may take some space in an existing shop um and again you may have to figure out if there is a cost involved in it that needs to go into your expense uh, similarly if it's an online order if you're transporting it to give the product to the buyer you may have to add the transport charge to your expenses and see or if it is per product then you'll have to add the transport charge in addition to the profit in addition to the price tag and give that as a price to the customer but tell them this is the transportation cost um and as you figure out how you're going to sell make sure you assign somebody for selling responsibility as in who is going to sell what by one somebody might say hey i built 10 of these a person a you're going to sell 3 for me by 2 in 2 weeks and and they can figure out how to sell and person b can sell two more and then person c can sell five more you know as an example but make sure that you put that also in your planning and and when you sell some behaviors that are very important is you want to be respectful and courteous to your customers regardless of whether they're going to buy or not you want to make sure that you're very respectful and you also want to ma- maintain the product truth you want to tell what the product is all about in a very honest manner speaking the truth not exaggerating the facts and selling them something that's not what you've built okay these are important practices behaviors and ethics when you sell second is even if somebody is not buying a product ask them why they don't want it they may say no i don't have a need or they may say i already have one or they may say yeah but it's too expensive or they may say i like it but i wish you had this feature also the reason why that is important is because then you can start to use that in the next set of product that you're building it's important feedback and the last one is do not push someone too hard as you're trying to sell of course you may want to convince you may want to answer but you don't want to push too much somebody and when you push someone too much you will start to dilute your behavior meaning you may start getting argumentative you may start to convince too much at which point you may not be respectful so be careful about that and again you know be very courteous use please say thank you like listen more this is an important aspect if it took a lot of time for you to build it also takes a lot of patience for you to sell right so these are some of the things that you want to keep in mind as you start to sell the product so we talked about pricing and advertising now let's look at some example so once you start selling a product i told you we want to fill what's called a sales order so you want to make sure that who is your customer who did you sell it to on which date what product you sold how many units what is the unit price and what's the total price or the money you collected so when you add all of those that's your total sales this is important this is your total sales so this is an example of a company selling one product which is nature painting to many customers right in different units here is another example this company is selling different products different units and then they also have a total sales price so this is an example where the company has built more than one type of product right and they have sold it just another example right and but it's the same thing the total of all of the summation gives you the total sales Now let's look at how to do the profit and loss calculation. So the top table is your sales order, 
right? Taking one of the examples where the nature painting was sold, your total sales was 2,400. Now the bottom table is your expense tracker. You spent 2,000 rupees building these products. You built 10 of them. You sold all 10. You got 2,400 rupees. So finally, the total expense minus the total sales gives you a number, in this case 400. If it is a positive number, it's a profit. If it's a negative number, it's a loss. For example, let's assume you sold only six of them and not 10, then you would have sold thousand, you would have, your sales would have given you revenue or money of 1,440, but you've spent 2,000 rupees. That means 1,440 minus 2,000 is a negative number which is 560, that means you're at a loss of 560. But that might be a loss today because tomorrow you may come in and sell two more, then your loss reduces. And you may sell two more and your loss reduces again, okay? So that's how you compute your, uh, calculate your profit and loss. So at the end of the day, it's your total sales minus your total expenses, okay? Pretty simple. All of these tables are some things that we have taught you how to do for you to maintain. And and uh, this is how you finally uh, get your profit and loss done. Now for all of the things that we've given you in these sessions as tables and things how to calculate, we will provide you with an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheets page that you can use and it will have formulas for you to quickly calculate them. Okay. So that's about how you calculate profit and loss. With that, we've come to an end of this session and I'd like to wrap up by saying thank you, right, for this session. I'll do one more session. We'll do a full walkthrough of everything that we have done. Um, but in a nutshell, from what we did in the previous session about, you know, product uniqueness, planning and budget, Today we've learned about how to advertise, how to pick the price for the product using your expense, full expense of what it took to build the product, choosing a profit percentage, looking at the customer affordability and you put a price tag. And once you have the price tag, you sell it. And we taught you about the various ways to sell and market your product. And then as you start to sell, you, you have your sales order, you calculate everything that you've sold, and then you can find and arrive at your profit and loss. With that, that wraps up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and I'll send you another video that recaps everything that we have talked about in the last four sessions. Thank you.